Somebody lift up a shout to the Lord. I know you have your swords turned with me to Isaiah. Amen. Isaiah 6. Beginning verse 1. We'll be reading verse 1 through 8 in the NASB. It reads as follows. In the year of King Uriah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne lofty and exalted, with the train of his robe filling the temple. Seraphim stood above him, each having six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongues. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Amen. I entitle this word, Lord, send me. Amen. Whenever you see a name mentioned in the Bible, it always has significance. King Uriah uh, reigned for 52 years from the age of 16, and he was the king that was immediately following King Solomon. Early in his career, he was victorious over many uh, enemies. He was known as a strategician. He was known for his military prowess. He was known for affecting the economy. He would be what we would look at today as Donald Trump when, or E.F. Hutton. If E.F. Hutton has something to say, people say, what did he say? Because that means I need to shift in that direction. So the power and the authority behind his prowess and his his um, his his infamous uh, knowledge about being successful in business and economy caused him every time he opened his mouth for people to sit up and pay attention. Mm -hmm. And here we have the prophet saying that in the year that this particular man died, I saw. So what God shared with me is that he represents the economy. He represents the worldliness. He represents all the material things that we think we have to have in order to do God's business. Yes. But God wants us to know tonight mm, that we got to move aside those things that society is telling us we got to hold on to. Yeah. He represents the money we think we have to have. When I came in, the woman of God was praying about people that are concerned about buying Christmas toys mm -hmm. uh, in a season when really and truly, if you research the word, Jesus was not born in December. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody ought to recognize yeah. that our mama and papa were on their way for a census. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And a census is not taken in December. Um, I, I don't want to get off track because I, I, I ran down that rabbit trail. But here, here is someone who was influenced by his father. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says that his father uh, was obedient to the Lord, but not with his whole heart. Yeah. And so that's key for us to understand that whenever we have an opportunity to influence the next generation, everything that's in front of them yeah. is going to impact the direction yes. they go. I'm yes. talking to some yes. parents this evening. Yes. I'm talking to some folks that don't think what they're doing, what they're sneaking and doing is being seen by baby in the next room. Mm -hmm. Baby sees everything and they're intelligent, they're articulate and they watch it and the sense of the moves and things going on 
on in the house is affecting their decision making from the moment you allow boo boo to come in the house. Hello, somebody. All right. Yes. Um, um, you'll note that if you study this out, King Uriah, he ends up with a leprosy. So here we have um, a man who, in his early dealings, he is concerned about God's commandments based on what he saw his father do. But as it went on, he did just like his father did. And he got away from the commandments of God. And he actually ends up going into the temple to light the candles, going into the Holy of Holies. And when he went there, the priest said, you can't, you can't go up in there. You can't, you can't do that. And, and, and this word is for somebody that thinks that you can do whatever your spirit leads you to do. See, you're not following the unction of the Holy Spirit. You're following the leading of your flesh, just like Satan. The, the lust of your eye, the lust of your eyes, and the pride of life is causing you to think that you can walk in any kind of way, walk in compromise, walk in, in carnality, and think that God is going to uh, uh, bless you. But I'm telling you, just like Miriam and Aaron and in Numbers, you will not be blessed. You will come up with leprosy just like Uriah did. His, his uh, eulogy said he died.